Hello, welcome back and thank you for joining us for this second seminar on the European Green Deal, uh, where we will seek to answer the question of how to identify opportunities and connect relevant actors and projects. The European Green Deal is the EU's plan for turning Europe into the first climate neutral uh, continent, transforming the EU into a modern and resource efficient economy with net zero emissions by 2050. My name is uh, Kjetil Elsebutangen and I will be moderating today's seminar. And throughout these in total five seminars, you will get information, awareness, and competence about the European Green Deal. You will learn about the developments within green industries and research in Norway, and you'll hear about ongoing projects and opportunities for cooperation. Our program today builds on the seminar that we hosted last week and uh, in which many of you also took part. On that note, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Innovation Norway for their contribution to this uh, seminar series. Uh, in addition to the information provided to you by the panelists, uh, we really welcome the type of engagement that we uh, started to see last week in the chat function, where um, embassies and actors started to share information. Um, and, and we really want to see more of that. Uh, that is one of the main goals with this uh, series. So we hope for that fruitful collaboration to continue. Um, and we also hope for your participation. Um, after the presentations, we will have a session where you can ask your questions and please uh, take part in that. You may also, if you like, uh, put your questions in the chat um, uh, function. Uh, we will try to pick up uh, those. If we're not able to answer all of them today, we will take them with us for the following uh, seminars. We have, I think, a nice lineup of speakers for you today, uh, starting out in Brussels with uh, Mr. Marius Wall, who is a national expert in the EU Commission at the Directorate General for Regional and Urban Policy. After Marius, uh, we will hear from Helene Fries, who is the Director of Strategic Positioning at Innovation Norway, we will then uh, hear from uh, Ms. Ragna Fidjestöl, who is working on the EEA and Norway grants here at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and then following her presentation, we will hear from Mr. Magnar Ödlien, who is the Director of EEA and Norway grants at Innovation Norway. And then last but not least, we will hear from Mr. Tore Myra, who is uh, joining us from the Confederation of Norwegian Enterprise. So before I yield this uh, floor to the first speaker, I will just make a quick technical note. Uh, for those who are not part of the panel, we ask that you, for the time being, turn off your camera and your microphone. And when it's uh, your turn to ask a question or take part, you can then uh, switch them on again. So, uh, without further ado, I will now then uh, turn to Brussels for our first intervention today. Uh, Mr. Marius Wall, please, you have the microphone. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, I think I sent you a PowerPoint that I would like to, if they could set that up, that would be much uh, appreciated. It is <laughs> But I can anyway, way. I can start. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, so I work in uh, for the Commission and uh, I'm working on uh, EU cohesion policy and what I thought I would do today was to explain a little bit what the EU cohesion policy is and then uh, how and in what way it is relevant to the Green Deal. Ah, there it is. Thank you. Uh, this is a very massive and complex policies, both of them. Uh, there's a lot of jargon uh, and there's a lot of big figures, but um, I'm going to do my best to try to give you uh, a, an overview of what this is and then uh, try to put it a little bit into, into a context. Uh, and I thought first I would start uh, on the uh, how the European Union uh, intends to deliver this very big European uh, Green Deal. 
Um, there are kind of two main strands, and I'm not going to say much on the legislative agenda, which is very extensive, but, uh, and I will focus more on the investments that the European uh, Union are going to do to, to finance the, this green transition. Uh, and there you have uh, two components. You have the EU's long-term uh, budget, known as the multi-annual financial framework. And then you have this uh, extraordinary pandemic uh, recovery plan. And uh, of these approximately 2 trillion euros, uh, somewhere between 600 and 700 billion will be uh, spent to finance the green transition. So, uh, and I could maybe just add uh, before we move on to the next slide that a key goal of both of these uh, these strands is to encourage also private sector investments to to the green transition. Uh, but I'll focus on these investments, and I will start by looking at the uh, multi-annual financial framework just to give you a little bit of an yeah. overview. Uh, and uh, as many of you probably know, Norway participates in a lot of EU programs uh, and funds. Uh, and I put it up, I'm not going to go through the through all of them, but this is a bit to put cohesion policy in a, a context. Uh, the purpose of cohesion policy or the rationale is to contribute investments to reduce economic and social uh, uh, inequalities. Uh, and as you can see from the, the figures here, uh, these uh, four cohesion policy funds uh, are more than twice, uh, the amounts are more than twice as much as all of the programs that Norway participates in. So this is quite a, a big deal. And actually cohesion policy, it is the single largest instrument of public investments in Europe. If you take it uh, uh, in an even broader perspective, in, in normal times, this would usually constitute somewhere between 10 to 15 percent of all public investments in Europe. And this is the biggest instrument, bar none. I mean, member states uh, at all levels. Uh, I'll go a little bit more into detail on, on the cohesion policy and, and how it works, these four uh, funds. Uh, as I said, it, the purpose is to reduce disparities, so there's a disproportionate amount that goes to regions in Europe uh, which are poor or less developed. And you can see here on this, uh, this map uh, which regions uh, these are. And that is a <clears throat> key part of these two funds, the Regional Development Fund and the Social Fund. Uh, in addition, you have a, a somewhat smaller fund, the Cohesion Fund, which focuses on infrastructure uh, and environment. Uh, and in the Norwegian perspective, this is also interesting because this goes to uh, the same member states that are also recipients of the EEA and uh, Norway grants. Uh, and finally, the fourth fund, which is new, Just Transition, which is uh, entirely focused on the green transition uh, and especially giving support to regions that uh, are negatively impacted by the green transition, moving from coal to renewables, etc. Um, and if you look at these uh, 15 uh, less developed member states, they have approximately one third of the population of the EU, uh, but they receive actually two thirds of these uh, cohesion policy funding, uh, which means that uh, in these countries, uh, these funds are even more important than they are uh, in, on average. And in several of these, uh, this cohesion funding actually contributes more than half or constitutes more than half of all public investments in these countries. So this is, is really rather uh, quite important. Uh, next, I thought I wanted to look a little bit at the, uh, the policy objectives uh, and how the uh, money is concentrated in, in cohesion policy. Uh, and you see there that there are uh, five uh, five policy priorities and the green transition or the green deal is uh, is one of them. So this is really a key area and there is a rule in the budget of the EU that more than 30 percent of the expenditure should be used on climate actions and they have specified then minimum contributions for 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 these um, uh, for these uh, uh, various funds. So if you add it up, the sums you saw earlier, 
this means that cohesion policy will will there will be spent more than 100 billion maybe as much as 150 billion of these funds will be spent on on, on the green deal um, now uh, as i mentioned in the beginning in addition to this uh, long-term budget you also have this extraordinary uh, pandemic recovery plan known as next generation uh, eu we should move to the next slide <laughs> thank you uh, which is yeah as i mentioned is an extraordinary one-off uh, plan to to recover from the uh, covid19 uh, pandemic uh, the cornerstone uh, of this is the so-called recovery and uh, resilience uh, facility uh, and uh, uh, almost as much as 40 percent of these this facility will be spent on climate action so here you can add to this 100 and 150 billion uh, and another almost 300 billion euros of these will be spent on on, on climate and, and uh, environment uh, and you might also note that uh, the additional funding there, a lot of this goes to this uh, cohesion policy uh, as well. Uh, a key part of this is that uh, this money uh, needs to be spent, is supposed to be spent quite quickly. So all of the commitments of all of these 800 billion will have to be made by the end of next year. Uh, and the payment uh, schedule uh, is until 2026. So it has a shorter time frame than the multi-annual financial framework. Uh, and this has a, a big impact on, on, on the final points I was going to make regarding uh, implementation. Implementation of cohesion policy uh, in, the, in the current period. Uh, so the way uh, this policy is structured is that you have, uh, you have the regulations at the, at the EU level, massive thing of 700 pages. Uh, each member state negotiates part develops and negotiates with the commission partnership agreements which are strategy documents this is then uh, divided into approximately 400 programs all in all uh, uh, which is the kind of the basic building blocks of the policy and then you have projects are uh, emerging from them uh, trying to imagine how many projects we're talking about tens of thousands probably hundreds of thousands of, of projects Will be uh, will be implemented in the next in the next years. Uh, putting all of this has been uh, the process of putting this in place has been delayed uh, mainly because of the the recovery plan, which has been the priority uh, for for uh, for the member states. Uh, in terms of how this is management managed, just to get a bit more to the practical points, uh, this policy is managed in a quite a different way than the programs that Norway participate in, where the Commission really runs the programs under direct management. But the cohesion policy is under shared management, and that means that the member states they play a much more uh, prominent role in uh, in managing these these funds. So uh, the member states are responsible for implementing these programs uh, nationally and in their regions uh, and in accordance with their national rules. The member states are responsible for allocation of funds to all end recipients, such as uh, companies, municipalities, NGOs, uh, etc. And they are also responsible for establishing, ensuring um, the functioning of all kinds of management, control and audit uh, uh, systems. So just just to to end on a bit more of a practical uh, note, which I know was what is with the purpose of this program. Uh, unfortunately, it's very difficult, if not say impossible, to kind of to give a straightforward answer to uh, the question: what kind of opportunities there might be in this for Norwegian actors, since this is managed through 400 programs in 27 member states in accordance with the rules in these member states. So it's a bit difficult. Uh, this difficulty is also compounded that you have this enormous amounts through this uh, uh, recovery plan, which is usually in the member states managed in a different way. So, but uh, I think considering the, the scale of what we're talking about here, hundreds and hundreds of billions for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of projects uh, for the green transition, uh, I think it would be something that might be worthwhile to look into a bit further whether there are any opportunities uh, there thank you 
Thank you so much, uh, Marius, and please stay with us uh, for uh, the the rest of the seminar. I think we will come back to you with uh, probably some uh, some questions. And it just uh, reminded me of one comment that I heard from uh, Executive uh, Vice President Timmermans' head of cabinet, Mr. Uh, Simpson, who said that uh, when the uh, COVID came just three months after the launch of the European Green Deal, um, uh, instead of putting the Green Deal in the shelf, they put it on steroids. And I think that sort of uh, is what you're illustrating when it comes to the magnitude of, of, of uh, available funding and, and, and uh, sources. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Good comment. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so we'll move on to the next speaker now, uh, Ms. Helene Fries. Uh, she is uh, the Director of Strategic Positioning at Innovation Norway and will, among other things, uh, give us an introduction to the Explorer, which is the official Norwegian marketplace for green solutions. And the Explorer was launched uh, globally in 2019 under uh, the Green Tech Festival in Germany. Welcome, Thank Helena. Thank you very much. Thank you. you have the floor. Hello and um, good morning, Europe. <laughs> Last week, our CEO, Håkon Haugli, was here at this uh, seminar and he said that he was thrilled to attend. And he also said that no other country than Norway is better suited to provide green solutions to the world. And the reason for these uh, seminars uh, is to identify the opportunities in your countries on what Norway has to offer. And that makes me thrilled because I'm here today to present some uh, digital uh, strategic positioning tools for uh, Team Norway that Innovation Norway has developed. And we all have got a really ambitious export goal from our new government. We are to double exports without oil and gas within 2030. So that means that we have to position new industries for international exports. And globalization and digitization has made the world one big, highly competitive market. And in international competition, it is nations and companies with a strong position that wins. And we know that the world needs green solutions to solve global challenges. And we also know that Norwegian companies have solutions that can help solve these problems. So it is this message that we have to tell the world. We have to position Norway as a pioneer within green technology and sustainability. And Marketing is important because if we are not visible with this message in important markets with strong value proposition, we simply do not exist. And this is what strategic positioning is about. It is to focus our efforts where there are opportunities for Norwegian companies to grow and to have success. And to um, successfully position Norway internationally, there are some um, um, new uh, sales and marketing um, things that we have to take in account when it comes to business-to-business uh, -business, uh, segments. Because digital presence and digital um, visibility has become absolutely crucial and essential when it comes to modern customer journeys. So these... Uh, so we have to take into account new methods and digital technology in combination with the physical presence that we have, like uh, international business events with Norwegian pavilions, like um, uh, delegations with or without royal flavor. And of course, how can we, in the best possible way, utilize all the embassies and the Team Norway offices around the world? So Innovation Norway has developed and operates uh, a number of channel, channels and platforms on behalf of Team Norway. And we have uh, developed a toolbox uh, for you to use and also that Norwegian companies can use. And um, in this toolbox, you will find, for instance, a brand center. And in the brand center, there is um, a toolbox or um, uh, a library of content for you to use. And here you will find the complete uh, brand Norway identity, 
with logos and pictures and icons and PowerPoint presentations and films and um, stories uh, from a lot of different sectors in uh, Norway or what Norway has to offer. So if you're not registered on the Brand Center, please go and visit it. You will find it on brandnorway.no. But I'm mainly here today to talk about um, the Explorer. The Explorer, as Jettel said, is the official marketplace for green and sustainable solutions from Norway. And uh, I'm, uh, I have brought the film, so I hope that the technology is uh, with us. So here's a film that explains a little bit more about the platform. The world calls for sustainable solutions. Economic, social and environmental challenges also mean opportunities. Norway is pioneering green technology, connecting sustainable solutions with companies across the world at the touch of a button. Introducing the Explorer, a digital platform for Norwegian technology. Find relevant solutions for your needs across a spectrum of industries, from green shipping to clean energy and smart cities. Explore carefully selected solutions from vetted companies. Register and contact the company directly to start an immediate dialogue with the right person. To make business sustainable, we have to work together across borders, sectors and industries. The world needs solutions that work now. It's time to choose greener, better and smarter, setting a new business standard for a healthier planet. The Explorer. Green technology. North of the ordinary. Yep, that was the um, promo for uh, the Explorer. And I must admit, I really, really like it, even though I am uh, not very objective. <laughs> but on the Explorer, you will now find 460 approved solutions within a wide range of sectors. And uh, the, the whole um, aim or goal with the Explorer is to increase exports. We want to match international users or international aid, um, companies with Norwegian innovations. And at the moment, uh, there are more than 100,000 visitors internationally every month on the platform. And last time we conducted a survey among our Norwegian companies, one out of four said that they have got new, uh, new uh, contacts by being visible on the platform. And the Explorer, it is funded by the Ministry of Climate and Environment, and it's been operated by Innovation Norway. And we also use other funds to create content and also to run internationally digital marketing campaigns with all these stories. We have an editorial staff that helps Norwegian companies create and tailor-made uh, um, an English sales pitch for their solution. And we also uh, create content like films and stories and articles that you will find on the platform. We have more than 140 articles and all this content is there for you to use. So, you know, steal with pride, don't be Norwegians. Go ahead and, 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 and spread the world about Norwegian solutions because we know that companies in Norway have solutions to solve global challenges. And we have to tell the world that we are more than just beautiful nature. We are a country of explorers and serious business partners. And we do want to collaborate with international partners in solving global challenges together. So thank you for this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about the Brand Center and the Explorer and do use the content for inspiration in your everyday life and your everyday work for positioning Norway. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Elena and for really uh, demonstrating I think the Explorer as an attractive option to showcase um, uh, green and uh, and sustainable solutions. 
So um, we will move on to our next speaker, uh, Ms. Ragna Fidjestøl. She is a senior advisor on EEA and Norway grants at the Section for Central Europe and the EEA Norway grants here at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, Ragna has worked several uh, years in Brussels at the EEA and Norway Grant Secretariat, and she is now coordinating the section's work with the preparations uh, for the new financing period that will start in 2024. And she is also deeply involved in uh, the management of the grants, uh, including policy development and negotiations of bilateral agreements. Uh, with the countries that uh, receive the grant. So, Ragna, welcome to the seminar. Thank you, Kjetil. I have been asked to talk about how the embassies can help uh, connecting opportunities and actors with regard to the European Green Deal in the context of the EEA and Norway grants. Can you please put on this slide? Uh, for those who are not familiar with the grant, uh, through the grant we provide 2.8 billion euros to 15 EU member states. And as you will soon see on the slide that will come up, uh, there are three donor countries, but uh, Norway is by far the largest, providing about 98% of the funds. Uh, and as you can see on the map, the recipients are European countries in the southern and central part. The grant have two objectives, like you heard from the former speaker about the EU funds, is to diminish economic and social disparities in Europe. But there is a second objective with our grants uh, to strengthen bilateral cooperation between Norway and these countries. And the last objective is very important for what we're discussing today because it provides opportunities and it gives us some tools. Altogether, the grant supports almost 100 programs, or 97 to be exact, across several sectors. But the most important sectors for what we are discussing today are the business development and innovation programs, the research programs, and programs for energy, environment, and climate change. The grants are uh, transferred to the recipient countries who carry out the programs, but we have to agree to the programs. And there are some exceptions where, for instance, Innovation Norway are managing the programs directly, and I think the next speaker will talk about that. Most of the programs are carried out through open calls and different project proposals have to compete for the funding. The main target group is, of course, entities in the recipient countries, but cooperation with Norwegian partners is highly encouraged. In some programs, it's mandatory or they will get extra point in the selection process. Uh, the open calls are made public at different uh, platforms. You can, for instance, find them on the web page for the EEA and Norway grants, which you can see now on the screen. And I think this is a great opportunity for Norwegian companies and uh, institutions that want to take part in European cooperation. To facilitate the cooperation, you have a number of Norwegian institutions, public institutions that are partners to the programs. They assist both in, in developing and managing the programs, but also uh, in helping Norwegian actors who would like to get uh, into this program as uh, partners. So far in this uh, current mechanism, there is almost 1,400 projects with a Norwegian partner, and that represents 800 individual partners, since some of them are involved in more than one project. And many uh, open calls are still to be announced, so this is not the end story. If you want to know more about the projects that are funded and who the Norwegian uh, partners are, there is a searchable database on this uh, same internet page where you can look at the, uh, at the projects and get inspiration when you see uh, who the partners from Norway are. The EEA and Norway grants are complementary to the EU funds we just heard about uh, from our colleague in Brussels. And to a large extent, we are funding the same sectors. Although 2.8 billion euro is a large amount for Norway, the funds are quite small when you compare the, to the EU funds, as you just heard. Uh, if you can put on the next slide. Here you see the red dots are the Norwegian uh, or Norway and EEA grant and the uh, green line are the cohesion funds, cohesion policy funds you just heard about. 
And that is a, a, without the recovery funds that will come on top, the next generation EU. As you heard already, the next generation EU funds represent a big opportunity for Norwegian industries. And as you heard from the former speaker, we are well placed in Norway to promote the solutions that Europe need in the green transition. But uh, as the first speaker said, it's not always that straightforward to access these funds. Norway has a quite high success rates when it comes to applying for funds in Brussels. But getting ex access to this funding that will be both managed and spent at the national level in EU member states, it might be a different ballgame. We can see that some of our neighboring countries are sending a lot more staff to embassies in selected countries to help their industries uh, position themselves. And as it requires some efforts and in Team Norway, both uh, at home and abroad, they're of course also working on these issues. But I believe that the EEA and Norway grants provides us with, uh, uh, can also contribute towards this end and provides us with some extra tools. Many of the Norwegian partners who take part in the EEA and Norway Great Cooperation, they have already taken part in previous cooperation. And we see that many of them have uh, partners in, in several programs across countries and even uh, with the EU funded programs. This might indicate that once you get one foot in the door, it opens up further opportunities. The process of applying for the funds and forming the partnerships uh, is not always easy. It might be cultural differences. And we also hear from some actors that it's cumbersome to work in central European bureaucracies. But this could also be considered as a learning arena on how to do business in some of these emerging markets in Europe, as well as an investment in building networks. Even though it's not uh, profitable in the short run, it may pay off in the longer run. And as such, the EA and Norway grants is a low hanging fruit compared to EU, national, EU funding or national funding in the same countries. Therefore, we should encourage more companies to take part in this cooperation. Economic diplomacy is one of the key tasks of the Foreign Service. In the EEA and Norway grants countries, the, embassy have, the embassies have additional tools in the toolbox. This goes from dedicated funds for bilateral cooperation and communication, but even more importantly, through the grants, we develop networks, working relationships with key decision and policy makers in the host country. At the strategic level, the embassies are often asked to create understanding and support for Norwegian positions that might influence future policies and framework conditions, for instance, at the EU level. One example here could be the uh, diplomacy needed to get acceptance and support for uh, carbon capture and storage, CCS, or blue hydrogen as Norwegian contributions to the European green transition. In Norway, CCS is not controversial, and we are proud to be able to offer such solutions to Europe. The Norwegian Longship project aims to create a real value chain of CO2 storage in the North Sea, but it depends on cooperation from other European countries, as well as funding from the EU. I have experienced that the reality on the ground is, however, that many Europeans are skeptical towards this technology, either due to lack of knowledge or more or less legitimate concerns about costs or risks, and the so-called blue hydrogen, which is uh, hydrogen made of natural gas with the help of CO2, CCS, that could become a major export article from Norway, is even more controversial. We can be met abroad with the perception that Norway is a producer of fossil fuel and uh, people who question our sincerity in wanting to take part in the green transition. And this is why the, the economic, economic uh, diplomacy has a really important role to play. Through Norway Grant, we have been funding CCS research both in Poland and Czechia for a number of years. And we also have energy programs in a number of countries. We should cap capitalize on the co this cooperation to create allies who can help defending our agenda on CCS and blue hydrogen within the EU. 
I didn't say that this is not already done, but I think this is a very good example that uh, illustrate how we could work and al also on other themes and issues. Due to the work on the grants, the embassies establish uh, close relations to key stakeholders, both in Norway and in the host country. Uh, do we use this network to promote uh, Norwegian competence, solutions and policies in the host country? We know, of course, that we have the best solutions and products in the world, but do they? The need for marketing should not be underestimated, as was outlined by the previous speaker. The embassies could initiate with the use of the bilateral funds, seminars together with relevant clusters, professional associations and the stakeholders in the country to showcase Norwegian technology and solutions and competence that will meet the country's needs. The grants can also be used as a stepping stone towards EU funding. It's important to remember that it's the same ministries and the same actors that manage the EA and Norway grants that also manage the larger EU funds. In our bilateral research program, this is used uh, very consciously as an explicit objective. The EA and Norway grants are more accessible than the <coughs> Horizon Europe, but use the same rules and procedures to create capacity and pave the way for later cooperation at EU level. And we see that some of the research partners managed to get access to EU funds later. When it comes to attracting partners from Norway uh, to, uh, to the grants, one idea could be to liaise with companies who succeed in getting into the grants and see, uh, get their lessons learned on how to work, how to uh, succeed, and see how they can also help open the doors for other companies. I think it's interesting to look at the projects that do have Norwegian partners and those who do not. I've looked myself at the energy sector, the energy programs, and in Bulgaria, for instance, you have 21 projects with Norwegian partners. In some other countries, you have none. Even though when you look at the funded projects, they are really interested and interesting and could have benefited from Norwegian technology or competence. So we see that not all opportunities are fully seized. Can the embassy come through in making the funds better known? My main point has been that it should be possible to use the platform created by the grants, both to promote, promote Norwegian contribution to the European Green Deal and to attract Norwegian companies to new markets. Before concluding, I will just mention that we are about to, uh, to start the negotiation with the EU on the new period of the EA grants. And we should look into how we can be even more effective in designing programs that will help advance this agenda and look at the value added of bringing Norwegian actors into this cooperation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Ragna, uh, including for touching on the, the practical implications uh, of this for the embassies and also the, uh, the notion of, uh, of economic diplomacy, which sort of situates the, the grants in a, in a broader context of the foreign policy. Um, and CCS, you mentioned, uh, we, uh, just, just to say that we will certainly come back to CCS as a topic in our next seminar uh, and take a, clo a closer look at, at that. So thank you so much. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Magnar Ödlien. He is the director of EEA and uh, Norway Grants at Innovation Norway. And he has extensive insight into what has been achieved uh, through the innovation programs uh, and the many synergies with the objectives of the European Green Deal. The EEA and Norway grants have a long-standing uh, commitment to supporting sustainable and, and innovative projects in Europe. Um, but how do they tie with the EU's uh, own ambitions and what are the implications also for Norwegian businesses and embassies uh, who want to contribute to, to the green shift? So, Please, Magnar, you have the floor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Kjetil. Um, uh, as you have already heard uh, both uh, last uh, Thursday and today, Innovation Norway is uh, thrilled about uh, this series of seminar on the Green Deal. Um, I'm not sure if I can uh, match the way of Helene to express the enthusiasm, but uh, uh, my goal today will be to 
try to convince you that uh, the, it's a clear link between the business uh, programs in the EEA Norway grants and uh, uh, objectives and priorities of the European uh, Green Deal. Uh, that goes uh, both for the programs now already under uh, implementation, uh, but perhaps it will be even more interesting to discuss when then the discussions on possible future programs uh, will start. Uh, I think I have a presentation, so if you will show that, I will start with uh, just giving you the overview of the programs now under implementation. Uh, I will not go into uh, details, I will only show you the list. Uh, 10 programs, um, 10 business development programs uh, are now under uh, implementation. Uh, a lot of the calls, um, they are actually closed and projects have been decided. But we still have some interesting call for proposals uh, left, for instance, in Poland and in Greece. And in addition, we will then during the next half year have some calls on what we call soft measures. And that's really important uh, for discussing uh, the future, because that would be a call for proposals that could finance uh, smaller projects, feasibility studies and so on to facilitate future uh, cooperation. So uh, I really encourage you to, to uh, follow uh, that. And of course, we also have a lot of matchmaking activities going on. Uh, I would particularly like to mention a big event that we will have in Greece on the 10th and 11th of May. That will be in the focus area of Blue Growth. Uh, we will then meet uh, representatives from all the 10 countries implementing uh, business programs to discuss then how to create business opportunities uh, within the blue uh, sector. So that, that will be a really uh, interesting uh, event. Uh, the total amount uh, of funding under the 10 business uh, development programs in this program period is approximately 350 million euros. So uh, since then the state aid rules uh, apply, the total project portfolio will be about twice that amount. So it's a lot of money and a lot of projects uh, that, uh, that have been uh, financed. Uh, next. So an uh, important uh, question is, of course, why is this important for Norwegian companies? Uh, and please not note that I use the phrasing why it's important. I'm not even willing to discuss if it's important, because then I think we will be able to demonstrate the importance uh, of, uh, of this. Um, all the programs uh, will give opportunities and be the kind of a tool for internationalization of uh, Norwegian companies. It gives Norwegian companies uh, the possibility to look at and enter into uh, markets that perhaps usually are not involved in. Uh, it's not that many companies in Norway involved, as a starting point, involved in Romania and, and Bulgaria. So the EEA Norway grants is then very important for then the possibilities to find uh, new markets. And, and you can see there's some statistics. Uh, this is then uh, fresh statistics from the uh, project level database of uh, FMO in Brussels. So you can see that it's already 158 uh, donor state partners, and mostly of them uh, are Norwegians, involved in projects now under uh, implementation. And you can see that, and that's interesting and encouraging, that a large number of the uh, partners involved, they say that they, they will continue to work uh, with the, this also after then the, the completion of the actual uh, projects. So that means that it's a kind of an establishment of a long-term cooperation. So that is uh, really important and what we would like to see in the EEA uh, Norway grants. Because sometimes some people claim that oh, only consultants that will go in and participate in the projects and then they will be out again. But that's not not the case. We have a lot of uh, substantial uh, partnerships with long-term effects for Norwegian uh, companies. So next, please. Uh, and this is also documented by then the, the annual uh, customer uh, service uh, we have in Innovation Norway, because we ask uh, then the, the companies involved about then the impact. And you can see there that a lot of uh, partners, they say that this has uh, impact on on the, the turnover of the, the company, uh, you know, impact on the, on the export uh, of the company, uh, how they will be uh, competitive, and it also uh, 
means that they will hire more uh, people. So the participation in projects under the EA Norway grants is really of importance uh, for Norwegian companies. So it's a tool for uh, internationalization of Norwegian companies, together, of course, with a lot of other uh, measures. Uh, the next one. Yeah, and then the link between the, the EA Norway grants and uh, the Green Deal. Uh, we already have that uh, link with the, the programs under implementation. And of course, it's also we have the synergies with the program, all the program areas such as research, energy, environment, uh, and so on. But all the programs uh, uh, implemented, uh, uh, they have a green component. Uh, you have probably heard uh, the phrase uh, green industry innovation. That is a concept uh, developed uh, by Innovation uh, Norway. The first mentioning of this uh, phrase you can find in the internal Innovation Norway memo from March 2010. Uh, and this concept is adapted to the situation and the needs of the beneficiary states under EEA Norway grants because it allows for both uh, innovation uh, project, development uh, of products and services, but it also allows for investment projects that will contribute to the greening of the industry and processes in the beneficiary states. And that's a really important uh, point because we know that uh, uh, companies from, uh, from the beneficiary states, they struggle a little bit to compete in the innovation programs um, in, in Brussels. So it's a kind of, they operate let's call it a national league with a little bit of different uh, rules than, than the champion uh, leagues uh, rules they have uh, in Brussels. So it's a very good way for them to be involved in both uh, innovation projects and investments and also to cooperate with international uh, uh, entities such as Norwegian uh, partners. Uh, next, please. So then you can see that um, you look at the priorities of uh, the Green Deal. You can see that the EA Norway grant uh, programs already uh, contribute. They contribute to uh, innovation uh, projects. They contribute to, to investment in greener uh, technology. They, uh, they are involved in, in developing solutions in the transport sectors uh, and so on. So it's a good fit between then the priorities of uh, Green Deal and then the possibilities of EA Norway grant pro programs to, to contribute. So I I'll end this by talking about the way forward. Uh, so if you take the last uh, slide, uh, please. Well, first I would like to show you this one because this, you could believe that this is some kind of uh, spin from the communication department of the European Commission promoting the Green Deal. No, this is actually the slogan established for the, the business programs in EA Norway grants already 10 years ago. So you can see that we were kind of ahead. We uh, started the Green Deal uh, 10 years ago then uh, in, in the EA Norway grants by the, by the business uh, programs. So then we can take the last slide by the way, uh, the way forward. Uh, the way forward could be even more focus on, on, on the green a little bit more back to the green industry innovation concept because in this program period we also expanded uh, this with other uh, other sectors that could be a, a possible uh, way and i already mentioned the beauty of uh, green industry innovation that it allows for a lot of flexibility with both uh, innovation projects and investment uh, projects so it will then contribute to the to the european green deal in a good way because it could not only be about innovation because if you have should uh, contribute to the decarbonization and the greening, you also need investment uh, projects. Because it's very easy to talk about, oh, well, we will have research-based uh, uh, innovation projects. Yes, that's good, but we also need the investments to, to then implement uh, state-of-the-art cutting-edge uh, technology to, to really then reduce, uh, for instance, uh, CO2 uh, emissions. So we will have the need to have the balance adapted to then the situation in the beneficiary states. So I think I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Magnar, and uh, really for showing us how the EA grants can can assist in, in this race to, to net zero emissions and with true investments and, and opportunities. So thank you so much for that.
Uh, we have one more uh, speaker today before we uh, start the Q&A session. Um, and uh, while uh, Mr. Tore Myre is uh, coming to the stage, I will uh, encourage you to, uh, while Tore is speaking, that you raise your hand um, uh, and prepare yourself for, for the next uh, part of this uh, seminar. So Tore, welcome. You're the International Director in the NHO, Confederation of Norwegian Enterprise. And of course you work on, on uh, on promoting Norwegian exports, but also to, to sort of bridge the gap between uh, uh, policy and practice. You also work on, on knowledge sharing and how to bring uh, your uh, members up to date on, on uh, the possibilities and the investment uh, opportunities, etc. So um, really looking forward to hearing your uh, view on this, uh, please. Thank you very much. And um... Thank you for inviting us uh, to this event and also thank you to the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Innovation Norway for the, the good work you are doing and also for this seminar series. Uh, this is incredibly important for Norwegian companies uh, to, to be aware of the opportunities that are now arising. And I think this uh, the previous speakers have shown that very in a very good manner uh, the tremendous possibilities that are out there. Uh, the, uh, the, it, is, it is sometimes difficult uh, for us in Norway to, to grasp the transition that is taking place right now. Uh, we see uh, that this is politically driven uh, transformation of the energy system in Europe in order to solve the climate targets and the climate goals. And that is, uh, that is a dramatic change. Um, we see uh, it's not easy. We see the, the negative impact of uh, the electricity prices. That has also changed the discussion back home here, uh, where we are more focused on, uh, on the challenges and, and maybe not uh, grasping the big picture of uh, the ne necessity to, to achieve the target goals and also the opportunities that are arising. And I think what, uh, what Marius and Magnar and Ragnar has shown us, uh, the tremendous effort that the EU is putting into this, the, the big money that are going to be spent through the recovery funds, through the regular, uh, the regular budget, uh, through the EEA grants, uh, Norway grants, uh, in a very short time. And the question is, of course, uh, are we able to, uh, to grasp these opportunities? We have uh, in NHO uh, done several analysis of, uh, of the opportunities, and we see a very good match between the Norwegian competences, the experience that we have in Norwegian companies, um, that matches the needs of Europe in order to, uh, to make this transition possible. But are we man able to, 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 to do this in practice? That is the big challenge. Um, we have seen in our reports on the green electrical value chains, uh, the huge possibilities in offshore wind, uh, in batteries, uh, in uh, hydrogen and ammonia, in also in energy systems, how to manage this, the infrastructure, the digitalization that needs to uh, be in place to, to run these systems in an efficient manner, where we have great experience and competence in Norway. Um, how can we um, turn this into practical projects and opportunities? And we have heard that um, it's a uh, great variety of programs. This will be both at European level, at the local level, and it is difficult for Norwegian companies to, to understand this system and how to go ahead in, in uh, making this into a reality. And I think that is why also uh, the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Innovation Norway and NORBEP is extremely important because you are the door openers uh, to this, these markets. And for new players, small and big in Norway, not being used to compete in this and, and there's a lot of new 
platforms and programs. It is really important that uh, that you provide the advice and the uh, the assistance to companies. And we see our competitors are very active. They are all, of course, have an advantage by being members and being present there. Um, but they are also stepping up their advisory uh, system. The, uh, the, the, the local, the national Innovation Norway uh, promotion agencies. Um, so that, that's why we also need to be very active in, in doing that. And, and it's not easy because the companies are different. It's, it's not like a small company. Um, uh, it's not necessarily the right thing to, uh, if you produce some safety valves or pumps, uh, to knock on the doors of uh, Ørsted or the big players. You need to do it together in a consortia, in an organized manner. Uh, we need to, to look at the value chains and to find out how to approach uh, the right players in the right way by co collaborating, not being alone, but uh, finding the place in the value chain and knowing the time, the right timing to do, do business. And, um, and that's why this collaboration is so, uh, so important. Um, I, um, I think the discussion that took place at the last seminar as well touched, uh, touched on, on this. How can we work together? There are many, it's not only in the companies that there are big differences, small and big companies in different sectors, but also in the public sphere, a lot of players. How can we uh, provide synergies? How can we be more targeted in our approach in the di different uh, countries? Uh, and I think this is a big challenge on how to uh, convince also companies that uh, um, they need to be active uh, in, in this game. Sometimes they are also now in the short run, they have a lot, a lot of jobs. They are at the, uh, have a good capacity uh, or, or, or not more extra capacity, but how to convince them to think longer term um, because the train is leaving now. The, there is a very short time span. So now we need to, uh, to grasp those uh, possibilities. And I think that is a real challenge to, uh, to, uh, to achieve this in practice. I look forward to the dis discussion and uh, thanks uh, again for this opportunity. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Tore. Um, so we are now moving into the uh, Q&A uh, session. Uh, I have some names on my list already, but uh, don't hesitate to, to put your hand up if you want to take the floor, either for a comment um, or if you have a question and you want to direct it uh, in particular to one of the panelists, please uh, uh, do say so and, and turn on your, both your, your camera and your microphone when you are uh, speaking. Uh, so the first uh, I will call on is uh, Marius Dirdal. Marius, are you there? I'm here, yes. Thank you, Kjetil. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and um, I actually wanted just just very briefly to, um, to take the floor to uh, remind everybody about one more tool we have in that toolbox we are talking about today. Uh, and I think uh, all missions uh, know that uh, we have in the Foreign Service, well, uh, just to say, I am in the Foreign Service. <laughs> I'm in the uh, Department for Cultural Business Relations and Protocol. And in, uh, within uh, that department, we also have this unit for business promotion. So this is the, at the core of what we, um, what we do. So uh, all, all Norwegian foreign missions uh, have been working on business promotions uh, for uh, forever. Uh, and you also know that we have um, these grants uh, to support uh, the embassy's um, work in, in that area. Uh, all the missions can, can apply for, for those. And I w wanted to remind everybody that uh, this uh, year, uh, that, uh, the, that um, funding has been uh, bolstered by the government. So we have an additional 10, 10 million to, uh, to spend on that. And all, all missions can apply for, for funding to uh, to do this and Europe uh, is a priority area, a priority market, so to say, and uh, and green transition is also a, a priority sector for these extra funds. 
So I just wanted to, to remind everybody that we have this and uh, please make sure that you uh, are aware of it and uh, look into how they can be used uh, in, a, in a way that is useful for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Marius, for this uh, reminder that I think will be useful for, for many of the embassies. Uh, the next uh, one that I will call on is uh, Olav uh, Reinertsen from Sarajevo. Uh, many thanks, uh, Kjetil. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Very good, and also thanks to, to the speakers. Uh, I have... Uh, a couple of questions, uh, but first uh, some reflections from uh, from a small country in the outskirts of no of uh, Europe uh, in the enlargement area, Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I'm certainly pleased that you know I do not have to dwell on the very demanding political situation in BIH currently, but rather focus on uh, significant uh, potential uh, which BIH represents for Norwegian businesses and certainly uh, within green uh, energy. Uh, the energy mix of uh, this country uh, is uh, certainly worrying uh, and it's not even close to meet uh, the requirements from the Energy Community Secretariat, uh, Aki Communitaire, two thirds of uh, the energy production is from brown coal. Uh, they have maybe 20, 25% of hydropower, uh, hardly any solar uh, and, uh, and wind. Uh, but still, uh, we see a growing interest uh, from Norwegian businesses, Norwegian uh, investors uh, for solar potential. Uh, wind uh, and as well uh, hydrogen and currently I think that you know the pipeline uh, the potential pipeline of investments is in the area of 400 to 600 million euros which means that Norway could if this become a reality uh, could be the largest player and investor within uh, green energy in this country and actually transform BIH from a purely coal-based country into the new green reality. Um, at the embassy, we have one year ago, we established uh, a business association, NBBA. Uh, it is uh, growing in membership, uh, interest, in visibility. Uh, we are very active. Uh, but all this is good. Uh, what I, of course, would like to ask, uh, maybe I would ask, raise my question to Ragna uh, uh, and Innovation Norway uh, Mangenar, uh, who by the way is on the board of NBBA. And that is that all these programs and initiatives uh, you have referred to, uh, to what extent are these applicable to a country like BIH? Uh, and uh, we have been talking about the toolbox. In my toolbox and ambassador, as ambassador to BIH, uh, how could I uh, be supported uh, in one way or another uh, to make this badly needed green transformation into reality? Uh, I know probably the answer, but that is also a bit of a frustration because then, you know, these excellent presentations, uh, the discussions we are having will to some extent become quite abstract for an embassy in BIH and other countries where we do not have access to VA grants and all these programs uh, and initiatives. So uh, my question is simply, I would like to extend my toolbox. I need more tools. Uh, and to what extent could I, through the European Green Deal, could that assist me? Thanks. Very good. Um, I think uh, we will see if Ragnar or Magnar, would you like to try to touch upon some of this? Uh, I mean, he's describing a, a situation with great potential for changing the energy mix, but still uh, some frustration concerning the toolbox. Yeah, Olav, yeah, I think that the tool you are asking for is money. And that's, uh, that's of course, uh, a very political uh, thing. Uh, and you know that uh, we, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, prepared a study on how it could be possible to use them, the, the way of working uh, within EIA in Norway grants, the structures, uh, in the same way in, in your region. Uh, 
But of course, the, the follow up on that would be a, a really a political uh, question. And as I say, mostly uh, something about uh, money and, uh, and funding. That's what's actually what's, uh, what's needed. Uh, and you know that, for instance, Innovation Norway and the business uh, programs we uh, are involved in. The closest one to your uh, embassy is uh, Croatia. We have uh, our activities uh, there and we have discussed before that it could be possible to have some cross-border activities uh, possibly. But, but again, it's about the, the rules of the game in the EEA Norway grants and, and how it would be possible to, to use it. So that is a, more a question for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I think, than for Innovation Norway. Uh, okay, um, Ragna, would you also like to comment shortly on this? Yes, I can just echo what was said. Uh, actually, the EEA Norway grants is linked to the uh, EEA agreement, so it's limited to the EEA area. There are some possibilities for cross-border cooperation, but uh, it's not the big funding you are probably talking about. And uh, I think you have to then uh, revert to the Ministry and Defence uh, It was presented just few minutes ago. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will move on. I think the next one is on my list is uh, Geir Bekkevold from Prague. Geir? Thank you and a very nice uh, good, uh, good afternoon from Prague to you. And thank you for the seminar and also for the very pro positive input. I would like just to share one experience and then one recommendation. We have tried to, to, to use the ongoing networks we have to establish a climate and energy dialogue, meaning that we have used uh, the ministries, but not least the directorates, uh, that is the Research Council, the Directorate for Environment and Innovation Norway in a network to provide input to the energy and climate dialogue. It means also that the aim was then to have, before the corona came in, uh, vice ministers, both from energy and industry, to come up and look at concrete Norwegian experiences. What kind of, what are in it from both sides in relation to smart city work, in relations to renewables, in relation to CCS solutions, visiting plants, etc. We were not able to do that, so we moved the process back and continued the dialogue, also in light of the upcoming Czech presidency of the EU second half 2022, meaning that we know they have got, which we might touch upon next week, an understanding on how uh, we can cooperate concretely. On the CCS side, we see that the Norwegian company um, and uh, Norsem has the same mother company as the Czech operating with regard to renewables. And when we go into the smart city, we had the fifth conference this year, it means that when we go down the lane, we see that the people working with those these issues, like innovation, like uh, uh, plants, they meet each other at various meeting places, very concretely. So when but that means that they can then work together on the basis of the networks set up under the EA grants. And also that they can also benefit from developing new projects. We try also to identify upcoming events in the Nordic and here, meaning we have the Nordic Edge Smart City Conference, we have the Smart City Prague, we have International Electric Vehicle, conference seminar in Oslo a week in June, and we have also the Oslo Innovation Week. So that means that we try then to see on concrete examples on where we have like e-mobility, on other issues where we can share experiences. And this also linked. The aim also we did was to put up together with the Czech that when the aim of the visit to Norway was to provide input to the Czech use of the funds under the Green Deal. So it was a method of working. And when you start the people working in practice, they go to conferences in Barcelona, they go around and then they know about each other. So it's both important to concrete, to have a linkage between the bottom up and what is happening. And there is one thing more I would like to recommend is that uh, Innovation Norway, they have toolboxes like Brand Norway and Explorer 
And I think it would be useful to get more information about it so we can also make benefit from it. So it's very important to, to take a bottom up and to map what, of what kind of contacts that are already are out there and use that as a base for creating. And then when it comes to business opportunities, they are part of the, uh, when you go down into the cooperation programs in research and in other areas, then the industry are also part of it. But I must say that to have this series of seminars are very positive. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guy, and thank you for sharing uh, uh, your uh, experiences. I know that you're very engaged in this work in, in Prague, and I also see that Helena was nodding when you asked about more information on the Explorer, etc. So I'm sure we will uh, be able to follow up on that. So the next one is Lars Andersen from Copenhagen. Uh, thank you, uh, Kjetil, and thank you for uh, for uh, this series of, uh, of, of seminars on the Green Transition. I think it's very useful for, for all of us. Uh, the embassy in Copenhagen have been, uh, we have been scaling up for some time to uh, intensify our work on the green transition and we, we agree that there is urgency as stated by several speakers to position Norway and the Norwegian industry in the heart of, of this uh, transition. Um, over the last uh, couple of years we have organized a range of seminars and hybrid events directly to, to in, underpin the green transition including CCS, biotech, electric mobility, um, uh, sustainable buildings, to mention a few. And we're also presently working on a new business promotion strategy as a, as a, to, to, to help us along in our thinking. And as part of that work, we will be developing a, a, a communication strategy uh, for using uh, social media and other platforms to promote uh, Norwegian green and sustainable solutions uh, in Denmark. Uh, one of the main challenges uh, that we face um, is is to reach uh, decision makers and policy makers and the business sector in Denmark with, with the unified and, and the substantial messages on what Norway can bring uh, to the table. Um, in addition to, to our own, uh, the embassy's own network of contacts in Denmark, a clear messages uh, and interests from both authorities and the business sector at home is, is sort of is, is key to succeed. Um, we have used uh, material from the Explorer on social media, uh, which really helps uh, promoting uh, a message to a broad audience in a, in a sort of a high quality and, and professional manner. Uh, and more material of that sort would be very welcome. Um, in our case, material in Norwegian would actually also be an advantage when addressing an aud uh, a Danish audience. Uh, finally, I just wanted to, to sort of uh, put in there that uh, we would also like to see more comprehensive messages on what Norway can deliver, uh, backed up by industry uh, examples. And, and, uh, and also, a, um, um, we, we would like to see sort of more of a coherent effort by, by the industry and, and authorities in Norway uh, to, to reach out uh, uh, to, uh, and, and to be part of this uh, green uh, transition. Um, also, actually, we would like to see more communication packages to address skepticism about blue hydrogen uh, and in some cases also uh, CCS. So thank you again, uh, Kjetil. Thank you, Lars. Maybe I could say a few words on that and, and maybe Tore, if you also wanted to, to comment on that. But I, I think in, in general, there, there is a, a, a quite large or there are many processes now in government that have been put in, in motion uh, uh, related to green industry. Uh, and of course, there is also the new goal for uh, increasing uh, the value of the export uh, towards 2030, which is uh, really an ambitious target, meaning that the government has to come up with uh, quite, uh, uh, quite ambitious plans on various uh, topics. And, and uh, they are, as we speak, working on this, a roadmap for that. And I think there will be more information uh, that you are asking for coming uh, in, in in connection with that. Um, Tore, would you also like to, from, from NHO's side, because I think your organization has also been involved in many of these processes and, and see how we sort of uh, frame the message from Norway as one. Uh, the competition is very uh, tough out there, so uh, we need to, to put our acts together. No, I think you're very, very right, and uh, it's a very good point uh, from from Denmark. Uh, 
Um, and of course, it's a big market, so it's big many sectors. So trying to be more focused and maybe more strategic in our approach uh, will be very important. Uh, and I think uh, I would like to commend the the embassy in, in Copenhagen where the, the initiatives that you have taken, for example, now on the energy islands, uh, where you are very active in trying to be focused in promoting and connecting Norwegian companies to the Danish actors. And I think it's this practical job in finding out who should talk to whom and how to make the, the right arenas uh, is, uh, is really crucial. And, uh, and I think we also need to do homework on our side uh, how to be better at mobilizing the, the right Norwegian players, knowing uh, who should uh, be mobilized in uh, at what time and who should they talk to. And this collaboration between uh, the home market and the companies and the, uh, the, the system here back home and connecting with the various opportunities out is, I think we need to work on improving that connection because that is uh, uh, understanding the, uh, the timing and the right players uh, and having the contact with you on the ground out there and uh, companies or clusters back home is is uh, the key to succeeding and we are not we are not there yet i think in in uh, in managing and setting up good uh, good systems and procedures for that so we'll uh, be happy to continue that uh, discussion and see how also we can improve in on that very good um, we're now moving on to uh, the hague and gerber van erwen please you have the Microphone. Yes, thank you very much, Chetel, and also thanks a lot to all the presenters. Very interesting indeed. And um, I just wanted to mention very shortly indeed that uh, I think all of the uh, topics uh, which you raised as uh, interest, hydrogen, offshore wind, CCS, green shipping, very relevant for the Netherlands. Uh, the Netherlands just has a new government and a very high climate ambitions, um, uh, which they have also a very big budget for available, 35 billion euros in the next 10 years to, uh, to achieve those climate goals. And for achieving those climate goals, they look, uh, of course, in a very international perspective, but particularly towards the North Sea countries. And uh, of course, Norway can play a big role in achieving those uh, ambitions. And when it comes to either CCS, uh, hydrogen, offshore wind, etc. And in that, uh, on on that note, indeed, we actually um, see that we can work very good together with other Nordic countries um, in a Nordic context to promote our um, businesses. Um, Last week, I think uh, Hogan Hogley also informed us that uh, Business Finland and Business Sweden have signed an agreement with Innovation Norway. Um, so uh, that is, I think, a positive thing uh, that we can be complementary to each other. And in The Hague, we have worked very closely together on many topics, but in particular on promoting green hydrogen and in, in the case of Norway, then also blue hydrogen uh, as uh, one of the solutions towards the uh, climate ambitions of the Netherlands. But I just wanted to mention shortly that, that, that of course, we can be complementary to each other, but I also see that, for example, when it comes to offshore wind here in the Netherlands, the tenders are often uh, indeed uh, competition between uh, Nordic businesses. Uh, you see that Lotten Fall and Airset, of course, are also competing for the same tenders as Equinor is doing. And my question is actually, is how can we indeed then balance the benefits of, of, of uh, addressing us towards the Dutch audience in a Nordic context, but also uh, um, maybe avoid that we um, we are helping the uh, other Nordics uh, also uh, promote themselves in, 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 in a bigger way. And what, what I also wanted to mention there is that we see actually that uh, the Swedes and uh, in particular the Swedes and the Danes are have perhaps a little bit more of an aggressive approach when it comes to business promotion than, than we from a Norwegian context. And then often we we're the ones left behind because we see that they are having a more aggressive approach in that. So I was just wondering if uh, some of the speakers in particular, maybe Helene can comment on this uh, field. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gerber. And I'll invite both uh, both Tore and, uh, and Helene, maybe Helene first, uh, if you want to comment on that. Yeah. Hi, Gerber. Nice to see you. We had a great launch of the Explorer Netherlands a couple of years ago. Um, well, I, I, I really like your, your question and I really do agree that uh, the Swedes and Danes are much more aggressive and, and coordinated. So uh, what we really do have to do now in within Team Norway is to become much more coordinated on these strategic 
um, themes uh, like ocean winds and CCS and battery and green shipping and um, coordinate our marketing plans and communication strategies and in which channels we should um, uh, deliver our communication as one Norway. So we are we have some news for you to come very shortly, but it, uh, I can't tell any, anything yet. But uh, I guess that I, I do believe that you all will be very pleased with uh, some of the plans that we are working on at the moment. So maybe we can come back. Sure. Thank you so much, Tore. Yes, uh, thank you. It is. I think that is. Uh, it's a very good point, uh, and we have been increasingly uh, uh, interested in NHO in seeing how can we also improve the collaboration at the Nordic level, uh, because we see that we are often too small when we want to compete in the international market, and especially now with the big contracts and the big activity. Uh, going on and the big need that we uh, we see with uh, with the European transition, and sometimes of course we are competitors, and other times we can collaborate in order to actually be stronger together, and especially when you break it down to the value chains, uh, there should be a huge scope for for Nordic uh, collaboration or or collaboration between Nordic players at different levels. Um, we are not very good at that, and uh, and. And to see how can we actually uh, target some value chains and see how we can promote that um, is something we would really like to investigate further. We have good contacts with the embassies, of course, and the innovation no Norway collaborating with the, the, the Nordic partners. Um, but if we could improve that even more to see where we can actually uh, collaborate together would be uh, would be very good. Uh, and also at the same time, knowing that we are competitors in, in other cases. But we know, and that is a very good point that several have point, pointed at, that um, the, our Nordic uh, colleagues or partners and other countries are really working much harder and putting a lot of resources into promoting their own companies and uh, and we uh, we we still have something uh, i think to uh, to gain from from stepping up our own work in order to to be competitive thanks thank you uh mette Jøranli from uh, the embassy in warsaw uh, would you like to take the floor Yes, thank you. Hi, Kjetil, and thank you so much for, for this seminar, and thank you to all the speakers as well. It's it's very interesting for us here in Warsaw to, to have a good focus on, on the green transition. Uh, I would just like to echo, I think, some of what the, some of the uh, previous uh, colleagues have said, both Gadebert and, and uh, Lars. Uh, the embassy uh, in Warsaw, we're actually one of the lucky ones. We do have a full toolbox here, both in terms of uh, funding through the EA Norway grants, we have funds also from the ministry, Nairingsfema, and in addition, we also have funds from the Nordic Council of Ministers. So we're using all these possibilities to, to for, for our business promotion work. Uh, and I would also like to say the same as, as Gadebert was mentioning, and that is that we see one big challenge here in Warsaw is that the Danes and the Swedes are stepping up their efforts tremendously. And our biggest issue right now, I think, is, is, um, is resources, uh, competence, staff. Uh, because we are not able to meet the demands of the Norwegian businesses that are interested in Poland. Uh, we have a huge uh, business sector here, for, particularly Ekinor is big in, in Poland. And through that, we have a big industry that is coming. Uh, but we are unfortunately not able to meet the interest because we don't have sufficient staffing on the ground in the embassy. Uh, we have a good cooperation through Team Norway, but this is not enough. Uh, so we would also like, both Lars and Gerber mentioned, we would like to see a more coordinated effort back home. And who do we speak to when we need to bring in this competence uh, to be able to promote Norwegian businesses? Thank you. Thank you, Meta. I think we will just take that with us and see if there are any concluding comments uh, uh, towards the end. I have uh, then uh, Katrine Hauknes, I believe, from Berlin. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you very much also from my side for this very interesting seminar. I know that we're running towards the end, so I'm going to try to be quick. I had two points. And um, the first one was uh, basically an echo of what Lars and Gerber and Meta have already said, and, and also the need for communication packages 
on Norwegian solutions, um, including CCS. And I just would like to mention also to you that we've been working on this uh, specifically with uh, Northern Lights and Gasnova and uh, the the UED, our petroleum ministry, and and Klimen UD on a communication strategy on CCS. It could be relevant to more of you. We can come back to that next week, perhaps. My other point was that I wanted to pick up on Helena Fries' presentation and advertise a little bit for um, the cooperation that's possible between the four missions and Explorer. We started this um, spring 2020 when um, when Corona hit us all, we were stuck in home office and we uh, discovered that Explorer is in fact a very good strategic positioning tool. We ran two media campaigns, one on EdTech and one on Hydrogen, and that was a cooperation between the embassy. So that was uh, my department, the economic department and our press people, Innovation Norway locally in Hamburg and the Explorer. And we also then worked with relevant clusters in Norway, uh, IKT Norge, Norway Health Tech, uh, Norsk Hydrogen Forum. And they were then able to localize, uh, localize companies in Norway who are ready to enter the German market. And then we wrote articles about these companies in English and German and spread them across our network in Germany. And, and our goal, you know, was both to promote the individual companies, but also to promote you know, the broader specter of Norwegian solutions. And the result was a very large number of press articles and coverage in, in Germany. So um, I would just, uh, yeah, raise that point and like to say that we are, we've been very happy with our comp uh, cooperation also with the Explorer and it's been part of our broader information strategy that we have on positioning Norway uh, within the wider set of solutions for Germany and Europe within the Green Deal. So, yes, thank you. That's very encouraging to to hear. I think that's a, a really nice way of uh, of wrapping up this. Is Torstein Wangen there? I promise to come back to you. Uh, if you're still there with us, I'll let you have the a final opportunity to jump in. Uh, I don't see it. So I think uh, then I will try to just uh, wrap up. Uh, you know, we, uh, we had a mere, more practical approach in this seminar today than than, than last week where we had the general introduction to this. And we're trying to see on the, uh, how we can uh, connect the opportunities uh, between relevant actors and the embassies. Um, and I hope that you, uh, you uh, come back with uh, more impressions, a better understanding from the speakers we had today. Um, in our next seminar, we will then move on to more specific topics. And next week we will touch upon carbon capture and storage, CCS, and uh, renewable energy such as offshore wind and uh, solar. And we will then uh, try to, to focus on both research and, and recent developments and ongoing projects, etc. So um, I haven't been able to follow the chat uh, today, but uh, uh, once more, we, we encourage you to exchange information there, make the contacts necessary for your work. And, and uh, with this, I would like to just thank all the speakers uh, and all of you at uh, office or home office for uh, joining us today and looking very much forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you and goodbye.